Hello and welcome to Quick Tips, the Elementor video series. In this video, I'll show you how you can create floating bars in Elementor website. Elementor has recently added the floating bars feature in their updated plugin. Let me show you an example of the floating bars. There are three different types of floating bars that you can create in the Elementor website. The first one is call to action bar. You will see this call to action bar example here. At the top, you will see this call to action bar. This is a sticky call to action. It is floating at the top. If you want, you can put it at the bottom of the page. We have some content here and this is the call to action button. If I click on it, it will go to that particular link. If I want to close, I can close it from here. So this is the first example call to action bar. The second example is the running ticker bar. You will see this ticker bar at the bottom. This is also sticky at the bottom. If I move the cursor on it, it will be paused. You will see the pause and play button also. And this is the close button. If I want to close, I can close it. You can also change the speed of this scrolling text. You can change the style settings of these floating bars. And the third floating bar is at the top. You will see it here. This is the coupon bar. It will be very useful if you are using WooCommerce or e-commerce website. This is a coupon bar. I have some text here and this is the coupon code. If I click on it, this coupon code will be copied automatically and I can use this coupon code while making the purchase. So these three different types of floating bars can be created using the updated Elementor plugin. You need to have Elementor 3.24 and above. Call to action bar is available in the basic Elementor plugin. The ticker bar and the coupon bar is available only for the Elementor Pro plugin. So here you see this ticker bar and this coupon bar. It is available only for the Elementor Pro plugin. You can also create multiple floating bars and you can set the display condition of these floating bars on different sections of your Elementor website. So let's see how we can create different types of floating bars using the Elementor plugin. Do not forget to subscribe to Quick Tips YouTube channel. Watch new videos about website design, e-commerce websites, search engine optimization, social media marketing, WordPress tutorials, video editing tips, and many more. Press the bell icon to get instant notification whenever we publish new videos. So here I'm logged into the dashboard of the WordPress website and I'm using Elementor and Elementor Pro plugin on this WooCommerce website. This is a demo e-commerce website that I have created using the Shoptimizer theme and Elementor hosting services. For this demo website, I'm using Elementor hosting services. I have already published a detailed video on how to create an e-commerce website using the Shoptimizer theme and what are the advantages of using Elementor hosting services. If you want to watch those videos, I'll give you the links in the description box. Now we are going to add the floating bars on this Elementor website. Let me show you the version of the Elementor plugin that I'm using. Let's go to plugins here. And here you can see that the basic Elementor plugin version is 3.24.3 and the Elementor Pro plugin is 3.24.2. So both the plugins are above 3.24 version. Right, so this is a new feature added in the Elementor plugin. Let's go to templates. Just under Elementor, you will see the option templates. And under templates, you will see floating elements. Click on it. All right, so we are going to create the first floating element. Click on add new floating element. And you will see two different options here, floating buttons and floating bars. In one of the previous videos, I have shown you how to create the floating contact buttons using the Elementor plugin. If you want to know what is floating contact button, you can watch this video. I have explained how you can create different types of floating contact buttons using the Elementor plugin. I'll give you the link in the description box if you want to watch this video. All right, so let's go back. Now we are going to create the floating bars. So from the drop down, select floating bars and just name your template here. We are going to create the call to action first. So let's name it as call to action. Whatever name you want, you can assign the name. I'm going to name it as call to action one. Create floating element. Click on it. And you will see some templates here. These are the pre-designed templates. You will need to select one of these templates. And after that, you can customize the template. So the templates for the call to action ticker bar and the coupon bar are shown here. So if I want to see, let's see, click on it. If I want to check how does this look. So this is how this call to action bar will look. Let's go back. If you want at the bottom, you can select this one. This is going to be placed at the bottom. 
this is also call to action bar let's go back now if i scroll down you will see the ticker bar is there this is the ticker bar if i click on it you will see this ticker bar here at the bottom let's try another one this is also ticker bar so you need to figure out the templates you will need to select one of these templates and if i scroll down at the bottom you will see some coupon bars are there this is a coupon bar you will see the coupon bar here right so we'll start with the call to action bar let's go to the top and select one of the call to action bars here let's try this one click on insert you will see the call to action bar at the top here you will see the template if i click on this template you will see the settings for this floating bar in the left hand panel so here we have we are hiring then we have some content this is a button and this is an icon we have close button here so you will see the content here we are hiring you will see it here then explore career opportunities with us so if you want to replace this content you can simply delete this content and add your own content here at the top you will see the icon if i click on it you will see a list of all the icons that you can select from okay so from here you can select the icon i'm going to select this icon click on insert and you will see the icon is changed next to that we have call to action button this is the button the text for the button is view position you can change it from here and you can add a link here so this is the link for this button floating bar close button this is the close button if you do not want to show the close button you can simply hide it and there will not be any close button all right now let's change the content all right so i have changed the content and i have changed the text for the button also and uh, let's say i want to link this button to shop page so i'm going to copy the shop link and let's add the shop link here all right i'm going to show the close button now let's go to the style settings and you will see the basic style settings for this call to action bar this is the color of the icon you will see this color you can change the color you can also change the size of the icon then we have text this is the text color you can change the text mm -hmm. color from here then we have call to action button this is the button and these are the basic settings for the the style settings for this button you can change the color again for this button let's try another color here all right so this is how you can customize the style settings you can also change the paddings we have corners rounded or you can change the sharp you will see it will be like this all right then we have floating bar settings close button this is for the close button this is the color of the close button then we have alignment the horizontal alignment is to the center to the right or to the left then we have padding background color this is the background color you can change the background color currently we have this background color so i'm going to change it let's use this one currently it is using a gradient color you will see the gradient colors here you can change the color again all right so you will see the changes here angle you can also change the angle of the gradient color all right and this is the background overlay so these are the basic settings of this floating bar the call to action bar good advance and this is the vertical position if you want it at the bottom you can change the position from here or you can make it at the top do you want it sticky if you select yes it will be sticky otherwise it will not be sticky responsive if you want to hide it on the mobile devices you can simply hide it on the mobile devices this is how it will look on the mobile device and this is how it will look on the tablet again you can customize the style settings for the mobile devices as well as the tablets then we have css custom css and attributes all right now let's click on publish and you will see where do you want to display your floating element and you can add the condition here if you want to show it on the entire website you can select entire site if you want to show this on the particular pages or the woocommerce section of your website you can select the woocommerce section then entire shop or you can select the products or categories so i'm going to select it entire site 
and click on save and close right now let's go to the website and let's refresh it and you will see the floating bar at the top if i scroll down you will see it is still sticky and if i click on it it will go to the shop page all right if i want to close i can simply close it and it will disappear all right so this is the call to action bar now let's go back let's go to exit to dashboard then again go to templates floating elements now we have one call to action bar if you want to change the settings for this one you can simply go to edit with elementor again and let's say i want to show this floating bar only on the home page so i can go here and go to display condition again and from here i can change the display condition let's select singular let's select front page and it will be shown on the front page click on save and close let's go back and let's refresh it all right so here we have the floating bar let's go to other page contact us page and we do not have it on the contact page all right so we have this floating bar only on the home page of the website exit to the dashboard and we are going to create another floating element let's go to templates again go to floating elements click on add new and select floating bars this will be a ticker bar so i'm going to name it as ticker bar one click on create and i'm going to select one of the template from here let's try this one all right so this one looks good i'm going to click on insert all right so this is how it is going to look if i want to customize it i can simply go to the edit ticker option here you can select this and in the left hand panel you will see all the settings let's go to headlines and you will see the headline if you do it right it will last forever so this is the first headline here and this is the second headline you will see it just after this one if you want more headlines you can add another headline here you will see it added here you can change the icon from here if you want to add icon you can add the icon let's go to ticker here and you will see the options for the ticker autoplay currently it is set to autoplay you can change the scroll direction also and you can change the scroll speed also so this is the speed and here you will see the option pause on hover if i move the cursor on it it is going to pause it floating bar pause and play if you want to show pause and play you can show that option here you will see pause and play buttons here close button you can also add close button here all right so i'm going to keep these settings now let's go to style settings and again you can change the style settings of this ticker bar icon spacing you can change the icon color this is the icon that is used here text these are the text settings floating bar and these are the settings for the floating bar control horizontal section this is the horizontal section control size icon color then colors close button color we can change the close button color here all right so now it is visible and we can also change the size of the close button then we have headline spacing vertical padding all right so now you will see that the size of the ticker has changed because i have changed the padding the vertical padding background this is again the background color it is using gradient so if you want to change you can change the color now let's click on publish again and where do you want to display your floating element i'm going to select woocommerce this time and select entire shop click on save and close all right now let's go back refresh it so on the home page we have this call to action bar if i go to shop page you will see that the ticker is at the bottom if i move the cursor on it it is going to pause it the speed is super high we can change the speed also and i can pause it or play it then i can close it if i go to another category page it is going to show the ticker bar again let's pause it so this is a great feature that you can add to your e-commerce website now let's go back and go to exit to wordpress and i'm going to create a new one 
let's go to template floating elements click on add new and this will be a coupon bar select floating bars and name it as name it as coupon bar one create it and let's scroll down and select one of the template from here let's try this one all right fine let's click on insert this is similar to the call to action instead of a button we have here a coupon code which the customer will be able to copy now before adding a coupon you need to create a coupon if you do not have it you can go to the dashboard of the wordpress website then go to marketing you must have woocommerce installed to create a coupon or if you have any coupon code you can add that one you can go to coupons here if you are using woocommerce website then go to coupons and create a new coupon and add the coupon code here so this is going to be the coupon code that you can add here all right so i'm going to keep it as it is here now this is the content here you will see receive a free gift with any purchase over dollar 75 and this is the icon then we have coupon code you will see it here and this is the icon here copy icon success message will be copied so when someone clicks on it it will give you the success message that the coupon code has been copied and this is the success icon we will see how does this look then we have floating bar close button is there and this is the name again you can go to the style settings and you can change the style settings of this floating bar all right so i'm going to keep it as it is let's publish it and i want to show it on the woocommerce shop so i'm going to select again woocommerce entire shop if you want to show these floating elements on particular pages you can select page or you can select the post where you want to show this floating element you can select page and from here you can let's say i want to show it on contact page so i can select contact and it will be shown only on the contact page all right so i'm going to select woocommerce again here and it will be shown on the entire shop save and close Let's go back to the website. Let's go to home page. On the home page, we have this call to action bar. Let's go to shop page. And on the shop page, at the top, we have this coupon bar. And at the bottom, we have this ticker bar. All right, now, if I click on this one, it will say that the coupon code is copied. So I can use that coupon code while making a purchase. So it is very easy to customize these floating bars. Again, there are three different types of floating bars that you can create using Elementor plugin. The call to action is available in the basic Elementor and for the ticker bar and coupon bar, you will need Elementor Pro plugin. So that's it for now. See you in the next video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to get more quick tips about online softwares and tools. If you have any questions, please leave us message in comments section and press the like button if you like the video. Thanks for watching Quick Tips.